The best way to learn microeconomic modeling is just to see a bunch of models to watch how they're structured. So this video goes over Fred and George Weasley's decision about how many people to test their puking pasties on. If you'll remember from the fifth Harry Potter book, Fred and George Weasley developed these puking pasties, which are basically candies that make you throw up to get out of class. And then once you're out of class, you can take the antidote, which is also part of the candy. Like all good innovators, Fred and George Weasley know that they need to test their product on customers to make improvements to the product over time. The question is, how much testing do they need to do? And this model actually works well for non-magical businesses developing products as well. So how does this work? So what is our choice variable going to be? Well, in this case, we're deciding the number of people to test our product on. Number of testers, and we'll call that T. And we're going to use a classic benefit minus cost structure for the objective in our model. So first we need to ask ourselves, what is the benefit of testing people? And in this case, I'm going to say the benefit is improvement in the product. Um, we'll call that I, meaning the more we test on people, the more adjustments we're able to make in the chemical or magical structure of the pu puking pasties. And what is the cost? Why aren't we going to test this on an infinite number of people? The cost, in this case, I'm going to use the probability of being caught um, by Professor Umbridge, who catches people and has weird punishments for people. So we'll let this be PR, which is oftentimes the way I represent probability. So we'll fit this into the structure of the model. We put our choice variable under the maximization sign, number of people we're testing on, and it's benefit minus cost. So our benefit is improvement in the product, which is a function of our choice variable, meaning the more people we test our product on, um, the more improved our product is going to be based on the updates. It's benefit minus cost, so the cost is the probability of getting caught. And that is a function of how many people we tested on. The more people we tested on, the higher the chances that we're going to be caught by umbrage. And of course, anytime you have a probability, you need to multiply it by the utility or disutility if that probability happens. So here I'm just going to have D equals disutility um, if caught, disutility from umbrage's punishment. So here's our model. Um, let's see if the shapes of these benefit and cost functions follow the classic benefit and cost function shapes. So here we'll have our choice variable always goes on the x-axis, and we'll have our benefit improvement in the product on our y-axis. And the classic benefit shape has diminishing marginal benefit. So let's see if that makes sense in this case. So do we get a higher marginal benefit from testing it on the first person compared to testing it on the tenth person if we've got nine testers that we've already tested the product on and we add a tenth tester. Yeah, we probably already know most of what we need to know about the um, effect of the puking pasties based on the ninth person. We'll get a little bit of extra information from the tenth person. Maybe that person um, has a different age, a different gender, or something like that, that compared to the others. So we'll get a little bit more information, but it's not as big as the first person we tested on. The first person we tested on, we can tell um, if the pasties are gonna be really problematic or if they work at all. So that first person has a very high um, improvement in the product because we gain a lot of information. The 10th person, the marginal benefit for them is small, so we have a classic diminishing marginal utility shape to that. Now the cost one, um, we're going to graph our choice variable on the x-axis versus probability of being caught and see if it follows the classic increasing marginal cost structure. And I'm actually going to argue that it will follow that structure that um, as you test more and more people, you sort of get more, um, the whole operation becomes more conspicuous. So the more people you add to your testing pool, the higher and higher your marginal likelihood of getting caught is, because everyone's going to be talking about it. It's just hard to keep them under wraps. So we do have the classic benefit and cost shapes of the functions associated with this model. So finally, let's add a couple of exogenous variables to the model to make it interesting. And exogenous variables are just variables you stick somewhere in the model that are going to influence the decision somehow. 
So um, I might say the sensitivity of the tattletales in the Gryffindor common room is going to impact our probability of getting caught. So let's build that into the model. Let's um, redo the probability of getting caught function so that it not only depends on how many people we test, it also depends on the sensitivity of the tattletales. First, we still multiply that by the disutility if we're caught. Okay, and we can actually check what that looks like on the graph by looking at our graph of the probability of being caught against the number of tattletales. And we can see that if we have highly sensitive tattletales, that's going to rotate this graph up. So highly sensitive tattletales will lead to a higher probability of getting caught at any given number of test takers, any fixed number of test takers. And if there's a low sensitivity of tattletales, that could rotate this graph way down. As a matter of fact, if there's no tattletales, um, this graph could be way rotated down. So we see that the shape of this graph actually depends on how sensitive the tattletales are. And as we know, over time in the books, Hermione becomes less and less sensitive as a tattletale and less and less likely to turn people in for breaking the rules. Now, um, we could also add another exogenous variable if, say, we wanted to add the severity of the punishment from Umbridge. And I'm going to call this knowledge. Over the books, Umbridge sort of figures out the population she's working with, and she really figures out the kinds of punishments that will upset and not upset the students. So at the beginning, you get a detention, things like that. But as she realizes that's not working, she kind of ups her level of punishment. She takes away rights to play in Quidditch. She takes away things they really care about. So as the punishment, um, as her knowledge of good punishments for this group of people goes up, this um, punishment, the disutility, is also going to go up. And right now we've only graphed probability of being caught against the number of testers we've got, we could make this probability times disutility. And if we did that, um, we'd also get, say, a rotation up as Umbridge's knowledge about what's a good punishment goes up over the course of the books. So that's just one model that models the whole modeling process with all of its classic parts.